Hi guys, this is Miss Gold. Today's lesson is Module 1, Lesson 4, Scientific Notation. Your outcomes for today's lesson are students know that positive powers of 10 are very large numbers and negative powers of 10 are very small numbers. Students know that the exponents of an expression provides information about the magnitude of a number, and students write, add, and subtract numbers in scientific notation. The first thing I'd like you to do is just below the outcomes on your notes sheet, I'd like you to pause the video for a moment and I want you to copy down the two numbers that I have listed below. So go ahead and pause the video and when you're ready to begin again, unpause it. So while you were copying these two numbers down, you probably found the bottom number easier to copy because there were commas separating all the zeros. Let's picture for a moment, would it have been just as easy if there were no commas? Notice that it was actually quite difficult to copy down the top number because there's so many zeros. And in fact, because there's so many zeros on the top number, the chance that you are going to make a mistake is actually pretty high. And it is for this reason, for these very, very small and very, very large numbers that we have created a system that would reduce the probability that you're going to make a mistake in writing down the number called scientific notation. And that's what we're going to explore in this lesson. So the first thing we need to develop is our concept of powers of 10. And basically fact one and fact two basically say that when you have really, really large numbers, you can always find a power of 10 that is just bigger than your number. So um, that number, if it's very, very large, would be represented by a positive power of 10. The second fact is just representing really, really small decimals. So if it's really, really small decimal, you can always find a power of 10 that is smaller than that number. And when you find that power of 10, it's going to be a negative power of 10. So let's take a look at example one. We have m, which represents a very, very large number. And what we're asked to do is find the smallest power of 10 that will exceed that number. So let's start by writing down this number. So we have 9, 9, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So we want to find the power of 10 that will exceed this. So this number is going to be smaller than our power of 10. And the way you can find this power of 10, we know this power of 10 is always going to start with a 1. And then it's going to be followed by zeros. And what you're actually going to find is how many digits you have here is how many zeros you will need. Because our 1 here then takes you to the next place value up. So if we follow this by, let's see, we have 15 digits here. So this will be 15 zeros. And that's a lot of zeros to write out. So that's exactly why we want to start learning about powers of 10. So let's see, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So if I want to write this number as a power of 10, we would take our base of 10. And to kind of see the patterns of what happens with your zeros, there is um, a pattern going on there. If we just like to take a look at some basic powers of 10, like 10 to the first power is equal to 10. And 10 to the second power is equal to 100. Do you notice that there is a 1 here for a power and there's only one zero? This has a power of 2 and it has two zeros. So if we counted up these zeros and find there's 15 of them, we should expect that this would be 10 to the 15th power. Okay, let's take a look at example two. The chance of you having the same DNA as another person other than an identical twin is approximately one in 10 trillion. One trillion is a one followed by 12 zeros. So if we have 10 trillion, we would have the number 10 followed by 12 zeros. So let's write that out first. 10 followed by 12 zeros. So okay. So if we want to take this really, really large number, it's going to be more effective if we write it as a power of 10. So let's do that. 
Now, as we stated, you're going to have a base of 10, but then the power is how many zeros were in your number. So here we have 12, and then this one here will give us 13. <clears throat> now, as we learned in a previous lesson, if we wanted to turn this into a single power of 10, we can actually flip this, and what it's going to affect is our exponent, making it negative. It's a positive now, so it will, will become a negative. So let's go ahead and flip that, and this will become 10 to the negative 13th power. Notice that as a whole, this fraction here is a very, very small decimal. So when you have these really, really small fractions or very, very small decimals, you should always expect to see negative powers of 10 associated with that. So now, now that we've seen our powers of 10, let's take a look at scientific notation. Scientific notation is defined as a positive finite decimal s is said to be written in scientific notation if it is expressed as a product d times 10 to the nth power, where d is a finite decimal so that 1 is less than or equal to d, which is less than 10, and n is an integer. The integer n is called the order of magnitude of the decimal d times 10 to the nth power. Now notice, this is our basic format. But what's really important about this is how they define what D can and cannot be. Um, what they're saying here is that D has to basically have one digit before the decimal place. If there's anything more or anything less, that is not true scientific notation. So um, it's saying basically your number has to fall between 1 and 10, and it can be 1 but it cannot be 10 because 10 would have two digits before the decimal. So looking at example three, it says the finite decimal of 234.567 is equal to every one of the following, but which of the following is actually in scientific notation? So if we look at our definition, it has to have a value where the number out in front of your power of 10 has only a single digit before the decimal, and I only see that in one case, this one right here. Notice it is two point, and then it has a bunch of numbers, but there's that single digit before the decimal. Now this does not count, because it has to be between one and 10. Zero is not between one and 10, so this one doesn't work. Over here, you can see there are two digits before the decimal, so this one doesn't work, and notice, 23 isn't between 1 and 10. Same thing with 234, three digits before the decimal. 234 does not fall between 1 and 10, so this does not qualify as scientific notation. Same thing with this one, and same thing with this one. So the only one that is true scientific notation is this one right here. And I want you to notice, if we actually took the original number they gave us, 234.567, Essentially what you do to turn it into scientific notation is you first decide, well, what would the number have to look like out in front of my power of 10? And I know that it has to be a single digit, so it would have to move to here. So to do that, it moves over twice. So I know my number is 2.34, and then the other numbers just follow, so 5, 6, 7. And then you're always going to have times 10 to some power. Now we started with a bigger number, 234 is a big number. So that is going to lead me be to believe that we're gonna have a positive power of 10. And how many times you moved that decimal actually indicates the power. So here it moved twice, so this is going to be a power of two. Okay, let's take a look at example four. Let's say we need to determine the difference in the populations of Texas and North Dakota. In 2012, Texas had a population of about 26 million people, and North Dakota had a population of about 6.9 times 10 to the fourth. So the first thing I need to decide is, what operation are they actually asking me to do? So if we read through it again, you'll realize they're saying, what is the difference? And we should know the difference is asking us to subtract the two numbers. So that's the first thing. Now, the second thing is, both of my numbers need to be in the same format. So they either need to be in standard notation, like the 26 million, 
or they both need to be in scientific notation, like the population of North Dakota. Um, because we're trying to learn about scientific notation here, let's go ahead and turn our 26 million people from Texas into scientific notation. So 26 million is equal to the number 26. Three zeros would be a thousand, six zeros is a million. So if I want to turn this into scientific notation, my decimal is here right now. I'm going to take it and move it over. And remember, my number for my value out in front of my power of 10 always has to be between 1 and 10. So if I'm looking here, I know 26 is not going to cut it, but if I moved it here, that would work. 2.6 is in between 1 and 10. So we're going to say 2.6 times 10 to the power of. And we have to figure out, well, how many times do I have to move this decimal to get to this decimal? So I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is going to be to the power of 7. Notice it's a positive 7 because we started with a really, really big number. Millions is a very large number, so it's associated with a positive power of 10. Once I've done that, we can set up our problem. So we have 2.6 times 10 to the seventh minus North Dakota's population, which is 6.9 times 10 to the fourth. Now, the first thing I want you to note to yourself, so let's make this a different color, is that exponents, when adding and subtracting, the exponents need to match. So the first thing I need to do is I need my exponents to match. And the easiest way to do this is actually to take your larger exponent and you're going to move your decimal out and that will, every time you move it, it reduces your exponent by one. So let's go back to our orange. So here, I want the seven to become a four. Well, that means I'm going to have to subtract a three in order to get four. That tells me I'm going to move my decimal over three times. So this would be two point. Now my point is going to move over. That's one time. Two times, three times. So if you need to see that, one, two, three. And now when I do that, this would be 10 to the fourth power. So we have the power that we need in order to subtract our numbers. So in order to do this, essentially what we're going to use is factoring or the opposite of distributive property. And what I mean by that is that both of my terms here have a power that is 10 to the fourth. So here is one of my numbers, here is my other number, and they both contain the element 10 to the fourth. So if you think about distributive property, usually what we do is we would multiply a common number into the two or three different terms. So essentially you can think backwards here, this 10 to the fourth would have been multiplied in. So what we're gonna do is we are going to factor it out of that. So 10 to the fourth would come out, and then what would be left is 2600 minus 6.9. So if we subtract those, we're actually going to get 2593.1. And again, this is multiplied by 10 to the fourth. And we're going to want this in scientific notation. So let's make sure that we note to ourselves that our final answer should either be in scientific notation or standard notation. So first, let's rewrite this in scientific notation. Now, my number has to be between 1 and 10. So if I go here, it's not going to work there. It's not going to work there. It will work here. 2.5931, that is between 1 and 10. So 2.5931. Now let's think about how many times I had to move that over. So I'm going from a big number and then making it into scientific notation. So this is going to increase the value of 4 by how many times I move it. So I would move over 1, 2, 3 times. So this would be times 10 to the 4 plus 3, giving us a final scientific notation answer of 2.5931 times 10 to the 7th. Um, you can leave it as 
this if you want sometimes the directions will tell you what notation they want it in notice in this question they didn't say which notation they wanted it in so if you want to turn this back into standard notation if that makes more sense to you that's fine as well so if I wanted to move this decimal over seven times we would get two so five would be moving it over once twice three times four times five six seven then I'll just add in my commas and this is the difference in the population so this is people and so would this one be so either one of these answers will work it really just depends on what you're looking for and as you'll see in some other examples that we'll do in the next lesson is that kind of varies as to which method or rather which final answer you want to use